morning and thanks for watching FSC TV. Alongside John Kristovich, I'm Kenzie Council. Today we cover new dining options in the computer science building, Grady Judd's warning to K-12 students over a TikTok trend, and benefits tea has on your sleep. Only on the Weekly at 10, which starts right now. From Studio A on the campus of Florida Southern College, this is FSC TV. With fall break right around the corner, these schedules for transportation to the Tampa International or Orlando International Airport have been posted on the portal. Reservations are on a first-come, first-served basis, with each reservation required to be made three business days before the flight. There is a $30 fee per person each way. No refunds will be given out for anyone that reserves a ride then fails to show up for it. For more information, contact Joe Henson at the Department of Campus Safety and Security. Florida Southern recently expanded their campus dining options with fresh twists by Pet Pretzel Maker. Here is a deeper look into the new addition. Fresh Twists, which opened on September 7th, specializes in hand-rolled pretzels, smoothies, and cold beverages. This menu includes the infamous pretzel bites, pretzel-wrapped hot dogs, and pizza. They also offer vegetarian options such, such as mozzarella bites and cinnamon sugar pretzel bites. I spoke with the Director of Food Services, Tim Rabel, to get an inside scoop on Fresh Twist. Even though there is a, we prepare things, we, we make it all the dough fresh, so you're always going to get something that's been made fresh. Um, and, uh, and that is the reason for its Fresh Twist name. Tim also stated that due to the franchise being so new, some students have experienced longer than usual wait times, which are being worked out as they hire more staff and learn when rush times are throughout the day. I also had the opportunity to speak with some students on their opinion of Fresh Twist. Fresh Twist has amazing mozzarella bites and their lemonade is one of my absolute favorite drinks on campus. This new dining option will be open from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. Monday through Friday and closed on the weekends. Along with the variety of vegetarian options, Fresh Twist also offers vegan smoothies to any student wishing for an alternative dairy option. It is now time for your Southern Spotlight. Before we end your Florida Southern news until our daily two-minute show that airs at noon, we run down some of the events happening throughout the Florida Southern community. Tonight we're starting with an event that continues to recognize Hispanic Heritage Month. Hey Mox, and welcome back to another Southern Spotlight. I'm your host, Gretchen Ferraci, bringing you the news on all things SGA. The Multicultural Student Council is hosting Tarde de Serenata on Wednesday, September 29th at 5.30 p.m. in the Simmons Center. Come enjoy live music from local artists and join in on a piece of Hispanic Heritage Month with everyone through the art of sound. Additionally, student government is excited to be having our first President Circle and Senate of the semester Thursday, September 30th at 6 p.m. in the Hollis Room. We can't wait to see all of our student organizations represented and have our first Senate meeting. Lastly, there will be a special Pink Friday on October 1st from 10.50 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Buck Stop. Make sure to wear pink to support breast cancer awareness and pick up some giveaways from your SGA representatives. That's all we have for you this time, Mox. May the Mox be with you. The volleyball team has moved to 5-1 on the season after two conference victories this past weekend. Junior Allie Travis helped lead the Mox to a big road victory on Friday night against St. Leo. She picked up 16 kills en route to a four-set victory. The next night, sophomore Mackenzie Peterman made her debut, notching 21 kills as the team took down Eckerd in the home opener. Senior Tierra Porter and sophomore Cassidy Markle each earned SSC Player of the Week honors for their role in the Mox victories. The team will be back in action on Friday night as they take on Florida Tech at 7 p.m. in the Jenkins Fieldhouse. Meanwhile, the cross-country team continued their reign of dominance with a visit to Tallahassee for the Florida State University Cross Country Open. As a team, the Mox finished 11th overall, besting the likes of Clemson University, Florida Gulf Coast, and other Division I teams. Senior standout Mason Jones finished 18th overall with a time of 24 minutes and 23 seconds, earning him the SSC Runner of the Week Award for the second consecutive week. The women's team, led by sophomore Ellie Fluman, placed 20th in their race, 
which also included star-studded teams such as the number one nationally ranked BYU and Stanford University. Both teams will compete again at the Division II National Preview in St. Leo on October 2nd. And finally, both the men's and women's soccer teams fell to Palm Beach Atlantic on Saturday night, but were back in action last night against Rollins College. For updated results on those games, head to fscmox.com. The latest TikTok challenge could lead to arrests for minors in Polk County. Teenagers who are caught damaging or stealing school property as part of the devious lick social media trend will face criminal charges according to a warning from Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd. These videos show students vandalizing and stealing from schools, mostly in bathroom areas. Deputies have already arrested three minors from two area high schools on charges of petty theft and criminal mischief related to a stolen soap dispenser and a damaged sink. Chief Interim Brian Dorman has called it the trend a, quote, senseless social media craze. The platform confirmed it has banned content surrounding the devious lick, claiming it violates community standards, but some users have been misspelling the word to get around the ban. The Live Green Lakeland EcoFest is back for its seventh year, presented by the GFWC Junior Women's Club of Lakeland. The free event will be held at Mund Park on Saturday, starting at 8 a.m., and will host environmentally conscious vendors, businesses, and nonprofit organizations. Attendees can enjoy making crafts while learning how to take small steps that make a huge difference. The host organization is a nonprofit that has worked to improve the Lakeland community since 1928. A nearby metro area reported to have the second highest rate of population growth by Polk County Census data unveiled plans they hope will encourage visitors to stay in the area and patronize local businesses. Downtown Winter Haven is getting the area's first hotel. The 108 key Staybridge Suites will be located on 5th Street near Graham Parsons Dairy Down, a historic, historic music venue. Construction on the Winter Haven Staybridge Hotel is anticipated to begin in the first quarter of 2022, with the hotel expected to be open for business in the summer of 2023. The 15-month construction project is projected to add 200 jobs to the area and 30 to 35 full-time positions when the establishment opens. A long-awaited attraction for St. Petersburg residents, a mere 10-minute walk from the pier opened to the public earlier this month. The five-story Museum of the American Arts and Crafts Movement welcomed its first guests on September 7th. The first of its kind, the museum features both permanent and visiting exhibits from the Arts and Crafts Movement, which revived and elevated hand craftsmanship following the Industrial Revolution until roughly 1930. Designed by a Tampa-based architect, the building itself uses a minimal color palette and natural light to showcase pieces as the artists, architects, and company would have intended. Glass skylights from Frank Lloyd Wright's Arthur Henry House in Illinois are installed at the center of one gallery dedicated to the movement's prominent architects that shared a philosophy that American style integrated nature elements. More information about the museum's exhibits and hours can be found on their website. North Carolina judges struck down a voter identification law they say is discriminatory against black voters. The law required photo ID to be presented in order to vote. The majority opinion in the case said the law was motivated by racial bias and therefore unconstitutional. The opposing judge said the law fell in line with efforts to curb voter fraud. Voter fraud has been determined by multiple sources to have not impacted the previous presidential election. However, plaintiffs said they had difficulties obtaining photo IDs. It will likely be brought to the appeal courts though they had previously blocked the law from being enforced while the trial courts heard the case. Nature enthusiasts will be relieved to know the giant sequoias in California were relatively unharmed by the latest fires. While giant sequoias are naturally repellent against low heat fires due to their foot thick bark, firefighters wanted to give the trees extra protection. The base structure of the trees were wrapped in aluminum based blankets which had previously been used to protect buildings from fires. Additionally, they ran sprinklers and used hoses to ensure the surrounding areas of the trees were continuously wet. The moves left the famous General Sherman tree, known for being the largest living tree in the world, unharmed. While caffeine has sometimes been blamed for heightened anxiety or a lack of sleep, 
A recent study has found that drinking low caffeinated tea can improve sleep quality and reduce the effects of insomnia. The study used an Eastern herbal, herbal medicine in the form of tea, which was derived from a common Eastern plant, such as the Chinese foxglove and gardenias. Subjects drank the tea twice a day and had better sleep for up to four weeks after the experiment. So if stress is keeping you awake, try having a small herbal tea break in your study day to relax, unwind, and sleep better at night. That's your news for this week. Alongside Kenzie Council, I'm John Kristovich. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week at 10.